Hi everyone, it's Professor Clark, and in today's lecture we're going to talk about first conjugation verbs. So the good news is this is all stuff that in theory you already learned. You received a basic introduction to first conjugation verbs in first year, and so this is just going to be a review of it and a discussion of some more of the complexities of first conjugation verbs. That being said, this lecture is going to be a massive info dump. Uh, there's a lot to be said about first conjugation verbs, and we are only going to be scratching the surface here. So please don't feel like you have to get everything the first time through or memorize everything on the first go. You might want to go through it on a slide-by-slide -slide basis and just work on one slide at a time or kind of... Uh, do a quick overview of it now, and then as you continue to work with verbs to come back and review the different slides and the different subtypes of first conjugation verbs as you encounter them. So again, remember massive, massive info dump here uh, and just take it in pieces. I'm giving it to you all in one giant chunk because that's how the textbook gives it to you but you don't have to memorize it all in one giant chunk. You can work through it in little bits if that works better for you. The way I'm going to present endings to you here is a little bit different than how you probably learned them in first year. It's exactly the same information, but just presented to you in a slightly different way. So hopefully you will find this enlightening rather than confusing. If you do find it super confusing, then that's okay. Just back off and go review your first year textbook. So Russian verb endings. The good news about Russian is, first of all, it only has two tenses as far as endings are concerned. It has past and what I call non-past and what Vputi, what your textbook here, calls um, present future. So there's just past and non-past or present future. And then it also has two conjugation types, first and second conjugation. This means that there are two sets of slightly different endings to learn for these two sets of verbs. Uh, however, the personal endings, what I'm going to call the personal endings here, are the same for each conjugation type. These personal endings are what tell you whether this is the ya form, the ti form, the mui form, or whatever. So those are always the same regardless of conjugation type. The difference between the two conjugation is in the vowels that come right before the personal endings. These vowels are what we can call conjugation markers, and they tell you whether this is first conjugation or second conjugation. So as a quick review, you will have the personal endings, which for all forms other than the ya form are going to be consonants. And then right before these personal endings, you will have your conjugation markers, which are vowels. The personal endings are the same for both conjugation types. It's the vowels, the conjugation markers, that are different. In this lecture, we're going to be talking about first conjugation. And first conjugation has ye when not under stress or yo when under stress, or you or u as its vowels. Second conjugation, which we'll discuss in more depth in a different lecture, has e and ya or a as its vowels. So again, this lecture concentrates on first conjugation, and we're going to be talking about the vowels ye or yo and u or u. Frequently, you can recognize the conjugation type by looking at the infinitive. This is frequently the case. Uh, so for example, many verbs ending in at or yat are first conjugation, and many verbs ending in eat or yet are second conjugation. However, this does not always hold true. There's a subset of verbs ending in at that are second conjugation, and a subset of verbs ending in eat that are first conjugation. So you can't always know by looking at the infinitive. In order to know the conjugation type of the verb, you have to know at the very least the ya and ani forms, and it's helpful to know the ti form too. So if it helps uh, when you memorize verbs, you should memorize the ya and ani and probably the ti forms as well, along with the infinitive, so that you can remember the conjugation type. Okay, let's talk about those personal endings. Again, this should all be review for you. You learned this in first year, but it's always helpful to review. So the personal endings are 
We're going through them in the order yatli onana ano mi vi ani, which is the order that verb conjugations will always be listed in. So you always do yatli ana mi vi ani when you list verb endings. So the endings are ya has an u or a u. And note that the ya form has just a vowel. Uh, and so it's basically the same in first conjugation and second conjugation. Uh, there are some differences, but in either case, you're going to have either an u or a u. Thi has shum yachiznak. If you remember uh, from the review of the spelling rules, sh is always hard. So it doesn't matter that we put a myachiznak at the end. That's just a spelling convention, but you always have to put that myachiznak after the sh. On, ana, or ano just have a te, so you're going to have vowel te. Mai has an m, so that's convenient. Uh, Mai starts with m, and the uh, verb conjugation ends with m. Vai is going to have tia, te, ye. And ani, once again, is just going to have te, just like on, ana, and ano. So that's u, u, sh, te, m, tia, te, for your six personal endings. As I said before, the personal endings are the same for both first and second conjugation. What's different is the vowels that go before the personal endings. And again, the first conjugation vowels are going to be ye or yo, and then u or you. There are a couple of things about first conjugation verbs. They're a little bit more complex than second conjugation verbs. Uh, they're much more common, and there are many more subtypes. So we're going to go through some of the main subtypes. And to start off with, we can say that first conjugation verbs can be either vowel stem verbs, in which you add the endings to a vowel, like chitats, or consonantal stem verbs, where you add the ending to a consonant, as in jit. And this is important because we use slightly different forms of the conjugation markers of those vowels, depending on whether we're adding them to a vowel stem verb or a consonantal stem verb. Secondly, first conjugation verbs can be either stem stressed or end stressed. And let's again use our verbs chitats and jits. Uh, chitats is stem stressed. Uh, you might think it's end stressed because it looks like it's on the ending and the infinitive, chitats. But when we add the endings, the stress stays on the a ah, instead of moving on to the endings. So we have chitayu, chitayash, chitayat, chitayam, chitayatya, chitayut. That stress is always there on the stem, on the a. Ah. You can also have end-stressed first conjugation verbs, like jits, where we add the endings and the stress suddenly shifts onto those endings. And this is important to know because first conjugation um, verbs can have either a ye or a yo as their ending, as their vowel and their ending. And that ye you're going to use when it's stem-stressed and the your is going to be used when it's end stressed. And we put in this ye or this your, depending on stress, with the ti, on, ana, mi, and vui forms. And then with the ya form and the ani form, we're going to add either an u or a u. And so we're going to add an u to consonantal stems and a u to vowel stems. If you look at chitats, our vowel stem, we're going to have chitayu, chitayut. If we look at jits, our consonantal stem, we're going to have jivu, jivut. So again, ye for stem stressed, yo for end stressed, u for consonantal stem, u for vowel stem. So let's look at some vowel stem verbs. And we're going to start off with the simplest form of vowel stem verbs. These are the simplest form of verbs in general, and they're also the most common. And you probably know them as chitat type verbs. These are verbs that conjugate like chitats to read, one of the most straightforward verbs in Russian. And you can see them on page 11. It's the first verb type listed. We have the chitat type verbs, and they give some examples of them. So with these, 
Um, they are a vowel stem, so you're going to um, take away the tem yachisnak of the infinitive ending, and then you're going to add the vowel stem first conjugation ending, so you, yesh, yet, yem, yet, ye, yut, or you, yosh, yot, yom, yot, ye, yut. It could be either. This most common type is going to be vowel stem and stem stressed. And examples are chitats, which we just discussed, znats, to know, panimats, to understand, or izuchats, to study. So we see here znats becomes znayu, znayesh, znayat, znayam, znayat, znayut. Panimats becomes panimayo, panimayesh, panimayat, panimayam, panimayat, panimayut. And you can also sometimes have verbs that end in yats or yets in the infinitive in this group. Uh, there aren't as many of them, but there are a few common ones, like guliats, to take a walk, or baliats, to be sick. And they are conjugated in exactly the same form. So guliats becomes guliayo, guliayash, guliayat, guliayam, guliayat, ya guliayut. And baliats becomes baleo, baleyash, baleyat, baleyam, baleyat, ya baleyut. Again, this is the most common type and the most straightforward type. The next type of vowel stem verbs we're going to look at are a much smaller group and more complicated, but they include some really important verbs. So you do need to know this group. Uh, and your textbook calls them the davats type verbs because davats is the most important verb from this group. More generally, they're called ava verbs. You might remember this from first year or you might want a refresher. So ava verbs are n-stressed first conjugation verbs. And in any type of n-stressed first conjugation verb, that ye before the personal ending becomes yo. And with these n-stressed first conjugation verbs, you're often going to have some kind of funny things happen. Uh, and these ava verbs are a perfect example of that. And these ava verbs lose their va uh, in the non-past, and instead you add the stressed ending. So, for example, with davat, to give, which your textbook has on page 11, davat becomes dayu. We drop the va and add a stressed ending. And here I've added a couple more examples of common uh, ava verbs. And note that these are all imperfective. Ava verbs are always imperfective. So another really common one is vstavat, to stand up or get up. And it becomes vstayu, vstayush, vstayut, vstayom, vstayutye, vstayut. Another really common one that you uh, college students will want to know is pripadavat, to teach, as in pripadavatil, a college instructor. And it's also just like davat, so pripadayu, pripadayush, pripadayut, pripadayom, pripadayutye, pripadayut. So these can be a little tricky or they can trick you up because you lose that va, but once you remember to drop the va and add a stressed first conjugation ending, they're very regular. An increasingly common form of first conjugation vowel stem verb are these ova verbs, these savietavats type verbs. And these are common and growing because it's this ending that's often used these days to create new verbs out of borrowed words. And so we can see um, savietavat is an ova type verb, and this is from a native Russian word. Soviet is advice or counsel, as in Soviet, that's where the word Soviet comes from. And they've added this ova verb ending savietavat. However, you can see that there are a lot of loan words, a lot of foreign words, who have been turned into Russian verbs by adding this ova yeva ending like tansivat, to dance. Um, note that we have a ye instead of an o after the tsa because of the five-letter spelling rule. Also, interesavat or interesavatsa, to interest or to be interested in. Aristavat, to arrest. Organizavat, to organize. Uh, so if you are creating a new Russian word or new Russian verb out of a foreign word, you're probably going to add this ova ending. And so there are more and more verbs with this ending, and so it's very important to know how to conjugate this ending. This ending can seem a little tricky at first, but in fact, it's extremely regular. So once you get the hang of it, it's not very difficult at all. In the non-past, you take the ova and you drop it and you change it for an 
ooh, and then you add the first conjugation endings. If the stress in the infinitive is on the stem, as in Savietovat, uh, the stress will just stay there. So in your textbook on page 11, you can see Savietuyu, Savietuyush, and so on and so forth. If the stress is on the at, in the, on the a uh, in the ending, uh, it is very likely that when you conjugate it, it will move back to the u. So for example, interesavatsa, to be interested in. We're going to drop that ova and replace it with an u, and the stress is going to fall on the u. So interesavatsa becomes interesuyus, interesuyusa, interesuyutsa, interesuyumsa, interesuyutyas, interesuyutsa. Uh, and just note the reflexive ending. We'll talk more about reflexives in a later lecture. Or tansivat, to dance. The stress is going to shift onto the u when we conjugate it, and we get tansuyu, tansuyish, tansuyet, tansuyam, tansuyetya, tansuyut. Those are the main types of vowel stem verbs that we're going to talk about in this lecture. And now let's switch over to consonantal stem verbs. Uh, first conjugation consonantal stem verbs are less common than vowel stem verbs, but there are some very important ones that you need to know. And on page 11, your textbook gives you what it calls pisats type verbs. These are a small group of verbs, but they're super, super, super important. So we're going to start with them. Remember, when adding uh, first conjugation endings to consonantal stems, you're going to have u rather than u in the ya and ani forms. And when you have these consonantal stem first conjugation verbs, they can be kind of tricky, so always keep your eye on them. And these pisat or skazat type verbs uh, can be some of the most tricky and they're the most commonly used. So really you need to memorize them and keep a sharp eye on them, and make sure they don't get out of control. This group of verbs, which are first conjugation verbs where the infinitive ends in sat or zat, they have both a consonant mutation and a stress shift. So they can really catch you out if you're not paying attention. The textbook gives you pisat to write as its example, and I'm going to go through skazat to say and kazatsa to seem, which conjugate in exactly the same way, but because it's so tricky, it's good to see several examples. So skazat becomes yaskazu, tiskazish, anaskazat, muskazam, vuskazitya, aniskazut. Note that we have this consonantal mutation, z becomes z, and this carries on all throughout the paradigm. It happens in all forms of the verb. Also, we have this stress shift in which the ya form has an end stress, and all the other forms have stem stress. Exactly the same thing happens in kazatsa, to seem. Ya kajus, tkajusa, onkajutsa, mukajumsa, vikajutsyas, anikajutsa. And this form is going to be followed by all the kaza verbs, of which there are many. So skazat to say, kazatsa to seem. Uh, your textbook also gives you raskazat to tell or narrate a story, and pakazat to show or indicate. So again, uh, you definitely want to keep a sharp eye on these verbs. Make sure that you know them because you can mess them up really easily. And if you mess them up, you might say something you don't want to say. For example, if you don't conjugate pisats properly, you might actually say something about pissing instead of about writing. Uh, and that can be very embarrassing. Some of us speak from experience. A small but very important group of consonantal stem first conjugation verbs are the jits type verbs. And depending on how you look at it, it can be a slightly larger group, uh, but these are first conjugation verbs that uh, are single syllable in the infinitive. And these eats ones, jit and plit, add a v. So all of these first conjugation uh, single syllable verbs tend to do something kind of weird. So you should always keep your eyes open when you encounter them. And jit and plit, add a v before a stressed ending. Uh, so your textbook gives you the conjugation of jits on page 12, 
So I'm going to give you the conjugation of pleat to swim in one direction. So pleat to swim in one direction becomes plivu, plivios, pliviot, pliviom, pliviotia, plivut. So there you go. Another type of consonantal stem first conjugation verb are these nuts type verbs, like vernut to return. Nuts verbs are almost always going to be perfective. So if you see a nuts verb, assume that it's perfective. And they are often end stressed, as in all the examples from the textbook, like vernuts to return, ulubnutsa to smile, or atachnuts to relax. Um, they can be stem stressed, as in privuiknuts to get used to. So I'll show you both examples. Let's look at atachnuts to relax or rest. Uh, and again, you see this combination of consonantal stems. So we have u and then end stress. So we have yo. So atachnu, atachnyosh, atachnyot, atachnyom, atachnyotya, atachnut. Privuiknut, to get used to. It's not in your textbook, but I wanted you to see it because it's stem stressed, has the u for the consonantal stem, but the ye for the stem stress. So privuiknu, privuikniš, privuikniet, privuikniem, privuiknitie, privuiknut. The last group of verbs we're going to look at today are another type of first conjugation verb, and these are called velar stem verbs. And if you remember, the velars are gkh, and these normally have g or k in them. And we can call them moch type verbs, uh, moch as in to be able to because that's the most common of these velar stem verbs. It's a small group, but they are very important. Uh, they have really important ones like moch, to be able to, pamoch, to help, uh, piach, to bake, and so on and so forth. You can always recognize velar stem verbs from the infinitive because the infinitive will end in ch myachisnak instead of ta myachisnak. So anytime you see ch myachisnak at the end of a verb, you know that it's a velar stem verb and a velar is going to pop up in the conjugation. In the non-past, uh, they can have either g alternating with je or k alternating with ch. So if they have g je, you will have g in the ya and ani forms and je in the other forms. If they're k ch, you will have k in the ya and ani forms and ch in the other forms. They can be end stressed, like piech to bake, stem stressed, like liech to lie down, or they can have a shifting stress, like moch to be able to, or pamoch to help. And they can be either perfective or imperfective. Uh, your textbook gives you moch, which is the most common and most important one, as an example, but let's look at some more examples, uh, starting with pamoch, the perfective of to help, and this is a shifting stress one. So we have Pamagu, pamorzish, pamorzit, pamorzim, pamorzitje, pamorgut. Or you can have piech, the imperfective to bake, uh, which is an end stressed one, and it's also a kitcha one instead of a guzhe one. So piku, pichosh, pichot, pichom, pichotje, pikut. And then you can have um, stem stressed, as in liach, the perfective of to lie down. And note, not only is this a velar stem verb, but there's this really funky vowel mutation that happens in it. So the ye turns into ya. Ya liagu, tilyajish, on liajit, mulyajam, vilyajitia, ani liagut. Velar stem verbs will also have some funky stuff happening in the past tense, but we're not going to worry about that right now. I think we've got more than enough to be going on with with just the non-past for this group of verbs. So I hope you found that interesting, not too much of an info dump. Like I said, you will probably want to break this into even smaller chunks and go through it on a slide by slide basis uh, and just review it in little pieces as you go over these verbs. So enjoy your verbs and, you know, do everything you can to learn them. And next time we'll be talking about second conjugation verbs. Woohoo!